Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to preview for you guys today. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new 135th scale Ryefield model Panther F. And the Panther F is basically the next version that was going to come out after the Panther G. And from what I read, it was supposed to go into production April, May of 45, and of course that's about the time when the war in Europe ended, so none were produced, uh, you know, or saw combat, anything like that. So it is kind of like a paper panzer, but a really cool one. Uh, they were proposing a lot of gun upgrades, as well as the turret is a lot smaller on this one. And, and speaking of gun upgrades, there's a barrel inside here. I can't wait to show you guys. It's, it's crazy how long this barrel is for this, uh, for this tank. It's kind of nuts. But I think I might actually build it that way because it's just so different. Plus also the has all of the infrared uh, fighting equipment on it that you can put on the vehicle if you want. Now this vehicle, or actually this kit, is an external one only. There's no interior parts, but there's still a decent number of parts inside of here for lots of lots of detail. Plus also Ryefield model has come out with an aftermarket upgrade set that is available and this has lots of photo etch plus also a new thing that Ryefield model is doing they're doing a lot of really high resolution 3D printed parts and there's some 3D printed parts actually inside this kit as well so it's uh, I'm excited about this one this one looks really cool what do you guys think is uh, it's it looks a lot like a Panther G you know hull down I don't know how much variation there was between the Panther G and the F when it came to the actual hull it they look pretty much the same there's probably some minor differences on it mainly it's gun and turret that are the quite a bit different so so both of these kits are available in the United States right now and we have them both in my store as well as our website andyshhq.com if you want to go on there and check them out go right ahead uh, lots of cool parts in this and I'm very excited to show it to you guys today so let's get started Okay, so let's take a look inside the, the Panther F, but before we do, just show you the side of the box art here and some of the accessories and parts that are going to be inside here. First of all, there is a real working torsion bar suspension in here, and I believe the tracks are workable too, looking at the side of them. You also get the night vision IR fighting equipment, as well as the different barrels that I was talking about, including the KWK... 42 L100 barrel, which is this one right here, which is that one that is ridiculously long. And when I show you the plastic coming up next, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that one has a muzzle brake, and then they also have the L71 barrel. I believe it's either L71 or L70. Let's see. L, L70 barrel without the muzzle brake is also included in this kit. So let's take a look at the plastic. So let's take a look at the uh, the first sprue, the A sprue, which has our turret inside. First thing I want to point out to you too is Ryefield does a lot of slide molding, so they get a lot of extra detail in the parts, and we're going to show you that in a minute. The, so right off the top, you can see our turret here, how much different looking it is than a standard Panther turret, how narrow it goes towards the front, and that was obviously so if it took a frontal shot, it would hopefully ricochet off there. And then now, here it is. Look at the size of that L100 gun. That is crazy long right there. And like I was telling you earlier, there's also the L70 gun inside. Now, the L100 has a muzzle brake on it that is slide molded. Let you see that just like that. And the L1, L70 gun that does not have one. But if you notice inside there, hopefully I can get it close enough, there is even rifling on the the tip of the barrel right there and I know it's not the spiral rifling I mean they can't duplicate that with a slide molding but it gives just the illusion that there is some rifling inside the barrel we've got our range finders right here they are also slide molded and look at this here is a Sturmgewehr 44 you know the uh, late war assault rifle the Germans came out with the barrel on that is also slide molded so that is really, really cool looking. And then, of course, you get the rest of the parts for the, the turret. You can see there's a nice casting on the, uh, the plastic here. Give it the look of, like, uh, some rolled steel. And then, of course, parts of the mantlet and the cupola are also on this sprue. So, very, very cool looking. 
Next up, we're going to take a look at this sprue right here. I know this is an X sprue, so it's further at the end. But these are all the individual little pins that make the track actually workable on this. And they're spaced out at such a level that you could put a couple of pieces together and push that whole little section into place. So you're not doing each one of those individually. So you can put five in all at once, glue them, and then you can just cut off the rest of the sprue. Now I say glue it. You might not glue. I'd have to look into the instructions a little bit further and see if they're actually by pressure fit or if you actually just glue the outer edge and you know then the the piece will kind of rock back and forth on the inner edge. But and you get a couple of the uh, the spare road wheels on here as well, but the tracks are workable on that. In fact, since we're talking about that, I've got two pieces of track right here and you can see they've slide molded the track so the out we have that outer hole and then it's just a matter of, let's flip this around here, just dropping those into place and then sliding those little guide pins right on the outside. So I know it looks like a lot of extra work, but actually it's, it's going to be fairly simple to put together right there. And then you have the ability to actually make them work. So it's a little bit more work than uh, a link in length, but uh, pretty nice looking tracks. And of course you get two sprues of that because obviously there's a, there's a lot of track pins you need to put on it. Next up, we are going to take a look at the steel road wheel. So this is supposed to be a late war tank, and the Germans were running really low on rubber at the time, so there is no outer rubber on the, the, the wheel itself. There is a little bit of rubber in real life on the inside right there to help, but didn't do a heck of a lot for the ride. The ride was still pretty rough, but uh, nothing you have to worry about painting. So these are a much, much easier wheel to paint when you're putting it onto the vehicle. Once again, you get two sprues of that as well. Now we're going to take a look at the accessory sprue here. And there is lots and lots of stuff on this. In fact, we'll kind of zoom in here. And you can see there's parts of the machine gun. All the tools are on here. The final drive covers. Looks like antennas are included inside here. Some different ones. The, uh, the tow cables. And a few other accessories like the jack. Now take a look at this. These are the MG34s. And on the edge right here, you can see that they've slide molded the barrels as well as the, uh, the machine gun bullets too. So the strip right there, you can see, hopefully, oh, sorry about that. You can see those are hanging down there too. So that is pretty cool. And there, of course, there's the rest of the gun for it there. Now we'll take a look at the lower hull of the vehicle. As you can see, it's made up of multiple parts. Zoom in on this right here so you can see the detail on the side. Also has on this sprue the glasses plate. Hopefully you can see some of the, uh, the texture on the, the front there, as well as the rear. This is where the, the, the rear of the vehicle. And then the reason this is made up of multiple pieces, they're using the, the same sprue from the Panther with the full interior. So you still have some of the internal wiring and stuff on the inside there. And then these are the, the top of the, or the bottom of the Sponson on there as well. And since we're showing the lower hull, well, let's take a look at the upper hull now. We'll zoom in there and let you see some of the close up detail. There you can see the texture on the vehicle as well. Still a few more sprues too. So now a lot of these parts are going to get used are from from other kits and then they're just reusing it. So not all these parts are going to get used. And you also get lots of different options too. Like for example, here we have the two different rear engine decks as well as two different types of rear storage bins on there as well. And then of course here we have all of the, the grates for the back where the radiators. We've got our hatches, fronts of the fenders. And these are the edges of like the kind of like the fender on there. Two plus some of the uh, I believe this is the engine engine oil heater on the back of the engine deck there. Next up we have our wheel sprue which I know we did one wheel sprue already and I'm, what I'm thinking here is we use is the drive sprocket off of here and then all of the torsion bars because if the track is workable the suspension will work on this as well so you can see those are slide molded as well 
So it's probably the wheel. Yeah, it definitely would be. These are rubber wheels. I just noticed that. These are the rubber wheels off of that. So this is off the regular Panther kit. And then this is the rest of the torsion bar equipment up there. I'll flip that over there so you can see both sides because you see all of this has been slide molded as well. Very nicely done. So the outer suspension arm is also attached to that portion of the ten torsion bar. And of course there's two of those inside there. Now this sprue right here is primarily the sprue off the Yag Panther as you can see here. So we've got all the front parts of the Yag Panther. So it might be this engine deck that they use off here or just a few of the little parts to make up the Panther F because obviously they're going to start sharing uh, equipment and parts off of other vehicles. And actually here are some more torsion bars. So maybe this torsion bar are the corrected ones also slide molded there. So as you can see, there's going to be a lot of extra parts inside of this bin, so you'll really be able to fill up your storage bin. Then for accessories, here is the sheet of photo etch that is going to come in there with all the little details on it. Simple decals, just two sets of decals on there. And then this, this is a set of rubberized stuff so obviously we need these caps here for that they do give you some of the rubber for uh, I guess is probably part of another kit because there's not rubber road wheels on this particular one and then also there's a little bit of a twisted thread for the tow cables as well and finally let's take a look at the instructions I like to show you guys that so you know what you're getting into when you go to build the kit and something I really like about Ryfield instructions here is the color coding on it. So each time you look at something here, the blue stands for the new part going onto the vehicle. So you know where it is. And then on this, for example, the red is the glue line where you need to apply glue to attach it. So you see the spots in here going up onto the side of the hull. It's got the red, you put glue there, there, and then a little line of glue on the side of the hull to attach the side of the hull to the bottom of the hull there. And that's how they go all the way down the line. So you see the new parts and the glue spots. And let's look at those tracks real quick. So there is what I was talking about where the individual pins will all go in there on one clamp. They also have cleats that you can apply to them as well. See that? And all the tools go on. And then of course yellow is your photo etch too. So you know which pieces of the photo etch. And then we'll go right to the back here to look at some of the markings. I guess there's probably just the two. That's right. We only saw the decal. So you got this uh, unusual stripe pattern one as well as a kind of a small, almost looks like a uh, digital camouflage a little bit on that one there, on the top one at least. So this kit is, like I said, now available in the United States. It's under $50 for this kit. So there's a lot of plastic and a lot of detail inside that for an under $50 kit. And like I said, they're available on our website, andyshq.com. And now we're going to take a look at the aftermarket kit that is also available. And it's obviously, it's going to change the vehicle around. This one's kind of a special one because this adds all of the spaced applique armor on it for the, the top of the vehicle. Later in the war, the, the Germans were getting shot up quite a bit by American fighter planes that were coming in from the top. So they had this extra armor that they put on the turret as well as the engine deck and cover up some of the exposed things. Plus you get new fenders and new side skirts as well as high resolution 3D printed parts that we were talking about earlier and they're very very nice looking. So let's just show you those real fast what's inside this kit. Crack this open. These are the 3D printed parts. So you can see the the spacers in there for the top armor are made out of 3D printing as well as the uh, fire extinguisher and the, uh, the tow cables ends. And then you get a, a decent amount of photo etch too. I'll try not to blind you guys too much with this. So here are the side skirts. And then on the other side, we've got some more. Oh, here are the fenders and some of the other pieces like that. And finally, this is one I'd be the most interested in this whole kit, is the spaced armor that they have on it to put on the top of this vehicle. Looks pretty cool. And this whole kit with all this photo etch and all this 3D printing 
under $20 for this particular set too. And these two are also available right now. So some great, great value, I think, on, on these kits. Lots of uh, really good parts. And if you decide you want to put the extra aftermarket stuff in, that is also available to you. So... Uh, before we go, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Go ahead and smash that like button. It really does help us out a lot. Uh, also, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe. That way you will be notified every time a new video comes out. And keep in mind, too, next week coming out, we have the new Tamiya F4 Phantom 2 preview that we have for you. We got a very, very early sample kit of that in. No decals or anything like that, just the plastic. And I'm very excited to uh, show you guys that as well. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. Please stay tuned. We have many more videos coming.